The assault pack is the most frequently used item at labs, and for good reason. It is light, compact, and stores all the necessary equipment we need for a two to three hour lab. So it is split into two major sections, the larger compartment and the smaller one, which I highly suggest uh, putting in smaller items in your smaller compartment. As common sense as it sounds, sometimes cadets don't do that and they just store everything in a larger compartment and it makes it really hard to find like your gloves. So these are the glove liners um, and they go inside your leather gloves here. So it's like a two part system. You have your leather gloves which are on the outside and your kind of cotton polyester mixed gloves on the inside. Uh, the sad thing about being issued these though, and you can tell by like how wrinkled they get, is I got them issued in not great condition and they barely fit my hand. And so I couldn't get larger gloves, which was unfortunate. So for labs, most of the time, I just end up wearing these when it's cold. Uh, but for FTX, I wear these just because we're uh, grabbing things more often and these could rip. Whereas the leather gloves keep your hands pretty protected. So that is good to know there. On to eye pro. So eye pro or eye protection is this piece here. And so it comes with the frame and then replaceable lenses. So this is the clear eye pro currently I have on, which I use for labs and when it when we're expected to be out into dark. And then there's the sunglass lenses, which are used for again brighter days and when you aren't out there when it's dark. My biggest qualm with these is that they're extremely hard to replace. And so the nose piece here also comes out. Uh, and so I often have to try to like force it off, almost like I need pliers, and then you have to push as hard as you feel like you're going to break it until finally the lenses come out and in. But eye protection are a necessity out on the field. Uh, our cadre get very mad when people forget it, which often leads us to getting smoked, which I might put the card right here for the hardest PT session when we got smoked. Might want to watch that video. And then the eye pro to ear pro. So again, our ear protection are required when we're shooting blanks, uh, especially the M240 uh, or M248 machine guns. And then also for a boom crew for football games, when we shoot the cannon, we have to wear them. And then also when we're flying in a Chinook helicopter, so the CH-47s, uh, they fly us to our field training exercise most often. So we have to wear these. So it comes with this nice case. Um, and then the whistle. So this is an army issued whistle. Sometimes the platoon leader slash squad leaders will use whistles out in labs to conduct movement timings. So like, or uh, also shifting fire. So at, at the lab, we ended up saying one whistle was lift fire, two whistles was shift fire, and then three whistles was cease fire. So that's an example of how we use the whistle. I've never had to use mine, and as you can see, mine's still in the bag. But it's something that you're supposed to have on you. Uh, I got also issued some extra yarn and a marker because of this. So I think I'll move on to my larger compartment now. Yeah. And the reason why I use this yarn is for a terrain model kit. And so terrain models are vital for the preparation stage of your mission uh, during the off board. Uh, and so when you are planning out a mission as a junior. So I haven't had to actually use it, but it will be extremely beneficial to me next year when I have to actually uh, create the operation pro uh, plan for labs. And so it has all the individual pieces here, and we added magnetic tape on the back of these so that it sticks to this metal uh, board. And so I we end up removing them and then placing them on a custom-built terrain model, which out at labs, we sometimes build a uh, topographical area with sticks and rocks to mimic different hills and valleys and everything in between when we have to then conduct our mission. So terrain models are what you'll be seeing a lot of before actually conducting the operation. And if you are in a nicer area, you can use a sand table because sand tables actually have better elevation and topographical features that terrain models just can't uh, have since due to simplicity but this is then my train model kit, and it's all duct tape, so it's waterproof. I highly suggest uh, either buying a case for one, so some cadets have them attached to their flick, and they're just little zipper compartment with all the individual pieces for a train model, and then you can also make one yourself.
so like I did. And that's where the yarn can be used too to simulate rivers and different vegetation here for the train model. So that is the train model. And then there's also the beanie, which is currently still sweaty from uh, the run yesterday. We did about a four and a half run to the Capitol building actually, and that's where this got soaked. But we have that. And then an extra notepad, because again, if we get left with our notepad cad, we get really mad, so you have to keep a notepad somewhere near you at all times. And then our PT belt. So the PT belt goes with me to PT every morning uh, because it is required on outdoor runs. And so different standards and SOPs require you to wear it different ways. Sometimes it's over your shoulder uh, when you're in the, uni in the APFU top, which I'll mention in just a moment. So maybe I'll save this for when I get into the APFUs. Oh, also the headlamp. So I also have my headlamp in here. And the headlamp is issued red lens, of course, if you can see that and the red lens is necessary for night land navigation or else you're basically flying blind. And then the white light here is only meant to be used when you're in trouble. So out at labs, they are, and FTX are very uh, specific on only using the red light to be able to actually conduct land navigation. And if you ever need help or you're lost or you need something, then flip on the white light and CAD will come to you. So that is the headlamp, which is also uh, often required for PTs uh, for runs outside and then absolutely necessary for FTX and any time you use land navigation. And then the final uh, part of the assault pack is this little section here. So it's in the larger zipper area, but it's this extra little piece uh, where you can either put the hydration bladder I mentioned earlier or you can have a little uh, clipboard. And so this is super beneficial for land navigation, especially when you're working on uh, floppy surfaces and you can't draw lines well. So having a small clipboard that you can put your map over top and then have your protractor and then be able to draw straight, smooth lines is really key to finding your point and not being 100 meters off. So I highly suggest buying this little small clipboard or even a full-size one because it fits in your assault pack and bringing this whenever you have to do land navigation. Um, but that is the clipboard and a little sharpie that can be used on laminate because sometimes uh, they end up laminating your maps and so in order to draw lines on them you need special markers. So also the protractor here, the protractor is a must for land navigation and then we get these little eight digit coordinates uh, for our actual points we have to go find and kind of like I mentioned in previous videos if you are doing land nav, you end up having to locate that point and then look in, it's supposed to be down to 10 meters of accuracy, I believe. And so in that 10 meter grid area, you're supposed to be able to find a point. And at that point, which is marked by either like a stake or a red box or whatever you guys use, is either uh, a name, numbers, some sort of sequence that you have to write down your card. You then turn it into cadre, they, ver they verify it. And then if you get a certain number in your time limit, then you end up passing land navigation. You don't have to go remediation courses. So it's always beneficial to have, yeah, this clipboard, marker, good protractor, uh, just everything to give you a little advantage out in land nav. Thank you guys if you're still watching up to this point. We're on to the last section of my Army ROTC equipment, which is the APFUs, the Army Physical Fitness Uniform. And we are issued two pairs of the short sleeve here and the shorts. Uh, one pair is currently in the laundry. So this is what the Army APFU top looks like. These are what the shorts look like here. If you see that. And then I have them attached, the long pants, uh, which also have zippers so it makes it easy to put them on and take them off. And just a little elastic band here. So for warm-ups, we have to bring all of these to PT with us at 6 a.m. in the morning, or 0600. And then we have the windbreaker top. So the APFU top here, you see the U.S. Army logo on the left there. Uh, it's kind of a mesh material, double-layered zipper. Um, and then, of course, the yellow classic stripes down there. Uh, so that is the APFU top. And then the last part 
of it is the long sleeve. And so I wish I was issued two of them, like the short sleeve and shorts, but I'm only issued one long sleeve shirt. And so we wear this over the short sleeve and then the APFU over top of that. So this is the complete APFU unit, uh, which we use for PT. And then we have to wear the PT belt when we're doing runs outside uh, and not on a closed track. So if you're wearing just like the long sleeve or short sleeve, then you can wear it around your waist. Or if you're wearing the APFU windbreaker top, then we have to wear it across our shoulder. And I think I forgot to mention earlier, but with my OCP, so underneath uh, what I end up having on with the zipper here is just a tan t-shirt. So we have tan t-shirt underneath, and then we have our dog tags, which are also issued items that should be wearing at all times whenever you're in your army uniform, whether it's the PTs for morning or when you're wearing just the OCPs. Um, so I have also my dog tags. And so the fleece jacket is also another winter weather equipment item. Uh, if you don't want to wear your Gore-Tex jacket, you can end up wearing your fleece, except if it's humid or wet, then I highly suggest not wearing it. Some cadets wore it and it basically is like a giant sponge and oh, I'm really glad I wear the Gore-Tex jacket. But the fleece is always an option. It might keep you a little warmer uh, with its insulation. And then the very, very last piece is my PC or patrol cap. On the back here is the name tag. On the front is a uh, patch or the uh, cadet signs which end up matching my OCP top. And so again, the three chevrons for, although being an MSU, like an MS2 uh, in leadership. Again, yeah, it's something you only wear outside. Uh, if you have army experience in general, you probably know that, but if not, yeah, it's something that you want to put on immediately as you leave a building. So often when we have our hands full, it's hard, but you end up like opening the door, putting it on, and the top is supposed to be in line with your uh, head. So you wear them with the cap pretty low. Uh, so if you see army officers or other enlisted soldiers wearing them down, it's not because they prefer it that way, it's because they have to. So the cap, the bill part is lowered and you also are supposed to shape it so that it's completely standing when you're wearing it. Uh, but I'm still trying to shape mine a little better. So this was a more comprehensive video of all the Army RTC equipment and other gear have been issued. Uh, as you can see, it is quite a bit and you have to try stuff it somewhere in your dorm. And they also make you sign for it. So since I'm contracted, I get to sign for my own gear rather than keep it locked in like the RTC uh, basement we have over the summer. So once you're contracted, you end up keeping it with you over summer, over all breaks, and it's completely up to your responsibility. So say someone breaks into your vehicle and steals it, you owe the army back a lot of money because when you commission, they will be having you re-sign for everything, make sure you haven't lost it, and have you uh, pay for anything you have lost. So it's something that is definitely a high responsibility. Keep good track of your gear. Like I mentioned earlier, try to dummy cord, yeah, like compass items, your eye pro, even gloves, because gloves are another thing. I think one time I lost my eye pro, but fortunately found it. And the second time I dropped my gloves in the back of the van and forgot that it was there. Uh, so those are two items really easy to lose and the army always will up price them. So you're gonna be paying more than you probably should, but uh, yeah, I'm really curious what you guys think. If you're an ROTC, I'd love for you to put down any tips and tricks you've learned for how to pack gear, uh, how you've ended up using gear, um, and I hope some of my tips have been handy. There's also a really awesome essay, it's like 4,000 words on how to be a successful cadet in your regiment for your junior year when you have to go to advanced leadership camp training. And so at that event, uh, this cadet, who I think scored first in his regiment, ended up writing this out where he ends up mentioning, one thing was like a simple watch, how having a backup watch, because out on the field where your missions are very time sensitive and someone has either an Apple watch like I'm wearing or something that they don't consider malfunctioning, will malfunction, uh, and then they're pretty much screwed. So because of that, I highly suggest reading that essay when you're preparing for your junior year. I'll leave a link to it below. Again, I love sharing the ROTC journey with you guys and would love to answer any questions you have. So shout out to JGP, who I'll leave his comment right here. 
He recently mentioned how he's a senior in high school and has joined ROTC. I really hope it is an amazing journey for him and can't wait to hear what he ends up doing. Hopefully not making the same mistakes I did with my boots. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so as always, ad Meliora and for better things. Yeah.